Recep Tayyip Erdogan is back as president of Turkey for another five years. Erdogan has been returned to power, winning the tense face-off presidential election by a margin of over 5%. With 97% of ballot boxes opened, Erdogan received 52.1% of votes in the second round on Sunday, beating his challenger Kemal Kilesh de Ruglu, who won 47.9%. The runoff election has been declared officially complete. An official announcement from the election commission is expected in moments from now. Erdogan held a victory rally in Istanbul and it's ongoing as we speak. The victory would mean that Erdogan will extend his 20-year rule for another five years. It will also see him take Turkey past the centenary of the Republic's foundation in October this year. It was only the third time that Turkey has directly voted for a president. Both previous contests had resulted in an outright victory for Erdogan in the first round. So a runoff vote has been uncharted territory for Recep Tayyip Erdogan. To give you a background, when Turkey voted last on May 14th, incumbent president Recep Tayyip Erdogan fell short of the 50% majority mark. He had received just less of 0.48% of the total votes. So about 60 million voters had to cast their votes again today to deliver a clear mandate. Now the visuals coming in on your screens is live from Istanbul where the incumbent president Recep Tayyip Erdogan has got the clear mandate of the 60 million voters. The May 14th election led to a second round runoff between the incumbent Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the opposition leader Kemal Kilic de Ruglu. And after about a couple of hours of counting, the incumbent Erdogan has declared victory over his opponent. Now, while addressing his supporters in Istanbul, he has thanked each and every member of the nation who once again conveyed the responsibility for governing Turkey for the next five years. He has also thanked the Turkish public for the democracy festival, as he calls it, the country has experienced during the election. He also added that about 85 million citizens of the country are the victors of the two elections that were held, one on May 14th and one today, May 28th. The Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shithai has already congr congratulated Erdogan for the victory and he has also called the Turkish people for their election victory. For the most part of the counting, the incumbent was showing a lead, but the margin was shrinking towards the end. However, with 97% of the votes now counted, Erdogan himself came out in the streets of Istanbul, and that's the visuals you're seeing on your screens. And he declared victory over his opponent, Kemal Kildish Doroglu. An official announcement is also expected by the election commission just moments from now. We are being told that the preparations have been made and just from a while from now the officials of the election commission of Turkey will be officially declaring the election result of the runoff that took place today.
Now, for those of you who are just joining in, the visuals on your screens that you see is coming from Istanbul, Turkey. And the incumbent president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has just, just moments back, he has declared victory in the presidential elections, which saw a second runoff today in the country where about 60 million voters were el eligible. However, in contrast to the May 14th election, the voter turnout was a little disappointing. Uh, May 14th saw record turnout. However, today the turnout was not as overwhelming as that day. Now our correspondent Lara is joining us on the phone line from Istanbul. Lara, the results have just come in and we are being told that the election commission is going to announce the result officially just moments from now. How is the mood on the streets? So the mood, uh, there start to be some celebrations in the street of Erdogan supporters that are coming out to celebrate the victory of the president. As you mentioned, the official results are not completely out, but the Electoral Commission has said that with the 75% uh, of the uh, votes uh, counted, Erdogan is heading the, for the presidency. So most probably uh, he will be victorious. And in fact, he already came out in the street. He came out in Istanbul in one uh, uh, in one bus in front of his followers and he made a victory speech right and right after riding back to power uh, erdogan has already said that in his speech all 85 million citizens of turkey are victors of election and he in fact called it a democracy festival how are you seeing some of these comments given that just days back his his reign being extended was looking dicey Exactly. Uh, actually, he's kind of initiating a third decade in uh, power, and uh, part of this speech uh, was uh, kind of metaphorically directing to the opposition, uh, to their claims that there were some irregularities in the voting process, and also he took the advantage to attack them before they said something, like uh, again insisting that uh, the opposition uh, will lose their seats after this defeat and that they will um, they have relation with uh, terrorism and LGBT community uh, co kind of a continuation of the campaign that he has been doing so far. Right, speaking of the opposition, the opposition in Turkey is really united against the incumbent. Uh, it was a six-party coalition after all and of course Kemal Kilic Durulu became the face of it. What are you hearing from the opposition camp? By now, uh, everyone is expecting Kilizaroglu to appear in one hour or so to at least make a speech of probably defeat of this uh, upcoming uh, of these elections. But so far, uh, the opposition has been quiet. There was uh, one spokesperson of uh, CHP, the party of Kilizaroglu, that said that uh, it's early to make uh, victory speeches. We have to follow the results and especially follow all the ballot boxes to avoid any kind of irregularity in the process. But so far, let's say that uh, opposition has been quiet and expecting the fully uh, picture of the result. Right. Lara, the timing of this election is absolutely crucial. It comes just months after Turkey was absolutely devastated by deadly earthquakes, a series of earthquakes. And exactly at that moment, the incumbent Erdogan was criticized not only for not preparing the country, um, preparing the country enough to overcome a catastrophe of that scale, but also there were shortcomings with related to corruption and uh, red tapeism in terms of the kind of uh, the areas that were affected. Even after all of that, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has made a comeback. What does that say about the voters in Turkey? Well, uh, somehow Erdogan managed to overcome this criticism and uh, convince the population that he's the strong person that can. Uh, save their lives, that, that he can create a real recovery of reconstruction of these affected areas, that he can 
help the population to uh, sustain themselves, to find work again. So somehow most of the population in these affected areas uh, have been convinced that she is the one that uh, could um, could uh, improve their life. So uh, mm, somehow with the promise of reconstruction of their houses in one year, in fact, uh, some of the houses have already been uh, constructed and he that dominates all the media in the country. Uh, he has been bombing uh, information about this recovery, about this reconstruction, and it's uh, natural that many people believe that uh, he can be the one that uh, will improve their lives. Right, somewhere on those lines, this election was as polarized as it can get. On one end was the incumbent, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who is known to be known to side with the right-wing orthodox parties. He uh, has also made uh, made uh, anti-LGBTQ uh, comments. And on the other hand, we of course had Kemal Kilish Durulu, who a lot of people say emerged as the Mahatma Gandhi of Turkey. He his Throughout his campaign trail, democracy, secularism, uh, women rights were, were some of the key and very recurring uh, themes during his campaign trails. And even if we try to decode the kind of voting that has emerged, not just today but also on May 14th, there was a split. A 50-50% split, absolutely. Uh, and would you say that along with the party lines, the voters are also as polarized because of course the Erdogan has emerged as the winner but if we try to decode the numbers here, 47, 52, 53, it's not very far. Would you agree? I believe so. The country is very polarized and we can tell from uh, both uh, presidential and parliamentary elections. For presidential is the first time that he loses in the first round, like he couldn't get a clear majority uh, to be able to be president in the first round. And if we check in the parliament, it's even more clear. Uh, his own party has been losing deputies uh, in every election, and he had to make uh, coalitions with uh, more and more members in um, to be able to keep this majority. And even in this majority is uh, with uh, 22 seats, uh, much lower than the previous election. So. Uh, I think we can tell that the society is very polarized. Uh, only 52%, around 52% of the population uh, chooses Erdogan, but we have to see the picture from the other side. Also, half of the population don't want him in power. Absolutely. Half of the, almost half of the population does not want Erdogan in power yet. Of course, he has uh, wrote back at it. How do you think the people are going to react with this 50% that we are talking about that do not want him? How do you think they are going to react to it? Do you expect um, this section to uh, any kind of protest breaking out or do you expect uh, them to still like keep supporting the opposition in the coming days? Well, it's very lovely to tell, but uh, we have to consider that all the economy experts are pointing out that economy is getting worse. Uh, even we, we've seen this week there was another record low of the dollar. The reserve uh, in the central bank became ne yes, negative for the first time in 20 years. So uh, it could be possible that uh, if we mix uh, a very polarized uh, society with a very uh, economic uh, crisis, of course it could split something, but I feel it's very early to tell. Right, Lara. Now, let's just look forward a little. Erdogan is, of course, staring at sky-high inflation and the value of lira is depreciating. So, what kind of a roadmap is he painting to tackle these issues? So far, during his campaign, he mentioned many times that the economic crisis is over and that he insists in his policy of uh, keeping the rate interest low, uh, and uh, getting help from foreign countries to uh, keep the central bank uh, standing. So, so far it looks like there will be a continuation of this policy and uh, it makes uh, economies very afraid because it creates a lot of instability and he's not taking uh, the steps that uh, all the experts are pointing out and it doesn't look like he will because 
during the campaign he didn't make any uh, strong promise uh, to improve the economy. As we are getting from Istanbul, Lara, there are, uh, there are Turkish flags, of course, waving across. There are cheers uh, taking place. And just moments back, the incumbent was right on the streets here, and he made his victory speech, of course. Now.